Shalom for our families, friends, and everyone tuning in. It's great to see you again on our weekly online service. Happy Rosh Hashanah. Shana Toba. We just entered the Jewish New Year. So let's give thanks to the Lord for He is good and His love endures forever. This week, we are so blessed to have Pastor John Mogi from GBI Gilgal sharing with us on the topic, The Art of Worship. Let's prepare our hearts to receive the Word of God. Have an amazing week ahead. Be highly favored. We see you again next week and God bless you. Hi everyone, how are you? I hope all of you are in good condition. I'm so happy to speak in front of you and thank you for having me to speak in your service or fellowship. And today I want to talk about worship. May I ask some questions to you? How many of you love to worship God? How many of you worship God daily? I love to worship God and I worship God every day. Sometimes with my wife, with my kid, and sometimes I do it alone. And I really enjoy worship God. And worship and worshipers are two different things. Worship is like singing about God to reveal our love, to reveal our feeling to God. But worshiper is the person God is not looking to the worship, but God is looking for the worshipers. We can read at John 4, 23. But the hour is coming, and now is, when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship Him. For the Father is seeking such to worship Him. Him. What the Father is looking for? He is not looking for a worship, but He is looking for a worshiper. He is looking for worshipers. And I pray that God will find the worshipers in the Forerunner Fellowship. So, talking about worship, worship is an art. So, if I can give this sermon a title or theme, I would like to give title, Art of Worship. Because worship is not about singing, but a lot of things we can dig, we can explore, we can learn about worship. But for today, we will learn about obedience. So worship is obedience. Between these 30 minutes, I will talk about worship in relation with obedience. And we want to learn from Abraham. All of us know about Abraham. Abraham and his wife, Sarah, they are longing for a kid. They are longing, uh, longing for children, for descendants. But they are waiting for more than 20 years until God opened the womb of Sarah. And uh, they got a son named Isaac. So Isaac grew and became a teenager. And one day God spoke to Abraham. Abraham, I want you to bring Isaac to the place that I will show you. And I want you to over Isaac as a sacrifice, as an offer to me. Can you imagine how Abraham feels at that time? How Abraham felt at that time? Because he, like he and his wife, longing for a child for a long time. And I believe they must love Isaac very much. I can uh, feel what Abraham feel because uh, me and my wife, we are longing for kids. We are waiting for seven years because doctors said that we cannot have a kid. But it is a miracle that I have one daughter. And I just imagine is if like suddenly God spoke to me and why don't you just offer Charissa, my daughter named Charissa, as a sacrifice to the Lord. It must be a difficult thing for Abraham. And from this verse, we can learn about worship because the first word of worship we can find in this verse. And you know what Abraham did? He asked his son Isaac and he asked two of his servants to go together to the place that God wanted to show. And at certain point, at certain point, if we can read from Genesis 22 verse 5, Genesis 22 verse 5, he said to his servants, 
Abraham said to his servants, stay here with the donkey while I and the boy go over there, go to the mountains where God will show. And at the mountain, Abraham will kill, will sacrifice Isaac, his only son. We will worship and then we will come back to you. This is the first word of worship found in the Bible. Actually, he wants to kill the son. He wants to kill Isaac. But because he knows worship is obedience, worship is not only singing songs to God. He said, we will worship and then we will come back to you. So we can conclude, we can learn from this first that worship is obedience. And we know about obedience, but it is not easy to obey. So if you want to be the worshipers that God is looking for, it's better for us to learn to obey more and more. So we want to learn four things about obedience. What is true obedience all about? Number one, obedience based on trust. The true obedience is obedience based on trust. Let's read John 3, verse 36. He who believes in the Son has eternal life, but he who does not obey the Son will not see life, but the wrath of God abides on him. So we obey because we trust God. A lot of people find difficulties in obeying God because they don't trust God. If I can ask a question, how many of you here trust God, believe in God? We surely say, yes, we believe in God. That's why we joined this Zoom meeting. But let's go deeper about obedience. How many of you having problem with uh, body weight, oh, it's so sensitive, but I have problem in Indonesia, in Jakarta, a lot of people having problem with diet, with body weight, they want to reduce their weight, they're afraid to eat because they're afraid to get fat. So a lot, a lot of types of diets, blood tops diet, and then uh, keto diet, and diet without eating any carbs, a lot of diets. So one day, I was invited to a birthday party, my friend's birthday. And when I sat down, his parents-in-law looked at me and said, wow, you're so big. Oh, it's, it sounds true, but it's true. I almost reached 100 kilos. And he said, his father-in-law is like 75 years old. And he said, how old are you? I said, it's around 40-something. And what's your weight? I said, around 98. He said, uh, I was at your weight at a time, but now I lose weight. I lose weight a lot, more than 20 kilos. And he asked me again, what's your blood type? And I, I, I don't know my blood type, so I asked my wife, honey, what's my blood type? And he said, A. And he can memorize all the things. He said, you better, you better do this blood type diet. If your blood type is A, let me tell you, do not eat soda, do not eat cow milk, coconut, ice cream, squid, prawn, crab, cuttlefish, frog, eel, lobster, orange, pickles, papaya, banana, melon, uh, honeydew, and then duck, lamb, chicken, goose, beef, bitter melon, Margarine, cheese, tomatoes, eggplants, sweet potatoes. I got shocked. And I said, uh, Om or uncle, I changed my mind. So my blood type is not A anymore, but my blood type is the blood of Jesus. Jesus has set me free. Jesus has redeemed my life and I am now free. So I don't trust, even though he, he's, he, he was a success. He was a success. He succeeded in this kind of diet, but I don't want to try because I don't trust. And to cut the story short, I lost more than 20 kilos. And then what, what, what kind of diets that I took? 
I just uh, believe in balancing because if I can count in and out the things I eat and the calories I burn, I think I can lose weight. So uh, I try to cut sugar, bad carbs, I limit my portion, I do sport every day and I lose my weight. So we obey because we trust. It is, it is very difficult to obey if you don't trust God. So that's why I asked you in the beginning, do you trust God? So if you trust God, you have to obey whatever God said in the Bible. There is a young man, rich young man in the Bible. One day he came to Jesus and then he asked, he asked Jesus, Good teacher, what should I do so I can have eternal life? Jesus said, it's very easy. Do everything written in the commandments. The young man asked Jesus, what, what are those commandments? Jesus said, honor your father and mothers. Do not steal, do not commit adultery. Love your neighbor as yourself. And the young man said to Jesus, well, I, I did all of those things. I mean, uh, I, never, I never do those things. I'm clean, I'm holy. And Jesus said, uh, that's fine. But if you want to be perfect, why don't you just go home? Because the young man is very rich. Sell all your possessions, give it to the poor, and come back here to follow me. And the Bible uh, said like this, the young man went sort of full because he had a lot of possession. I mean, he's not polite. He asked to Jesus, Jesus answer. He didn't say thank you. He didn't say bye-bye Jesus, thank you for the answer. And well, what do you think? Jesus, he asked Jesus. Jesus gave him the right answer, how to have eternal life. But he went sorrowful. He didn't want to obey. He didn't want to obey. What do you think the reason is? The reason is because he didn't trust Jesus. He didn't trust Jesus. I tell you my experience. A lot of experience to obey God. Until now, I still learn how to obey God more and more. Even though I like to worship God, but I understand God is not looking for my worship, but He is looking for the worshiper. Like example, if you know that our church is in Pantai Indah Kapuk in northern part of Jakarta, in uh, Pantai Indah Kapuk, so we call it Gilgal Center. So we started from zero only like several hundreds of people. And then we didn't have enough fun to build the church. And when we built the church, it's so big, we, we couldn't finish the entire building. So we started the first surface downstairs at the overflow room. So it can accommodate around 400, 500 people. And then we started with two surfaces. But after two years, God said to me, you have to move to the fifth floor, to the big auditorium, which can contain around like 1,000, several hundred people. I said, how come God, how, who, who gonna fill that big auditorium? God said, I said to you, move upstairs. So until after two years, without no fun, without no, no <laughs> affirmation, I'm not sure who gonna come to this church but I obey God and God provided the things, the fund that we need to finish the building, the entire building. Even after we completed the fifth floor, we haven't settled the fourth floor. And then when we started with first surface, it is full. God said, open second surface. What? Okay, I said, worship is obedience. Yes, Lord. So we open second surface and then continue, open third surface, open the fourth surface, open the fifth surface, open the sixth surface. Now we have six surfaces before the COVID, before the pandemic. And can you imagine uh, if we think, who gonna come, who gonna, what kind of people will come? God said, you pray, you pray for the sinners, you pray for the lost, and I answer your prayer. Now weekly, it's around like 8,000 to 10,000 for special occasion, it's around 11,000, 12,000 people coming to our service. Then, when we finish this building, 
there are people who said, well, let us bridge this church. So they pay for the fund and then we can install to them without, uh, without any like uh, obligation, how much we have to pay every month. Whatever you have, you just pay us and you can pay as long as possible. But I don't want to do that. I want to pay them as short as possible. And we can finish. We can settle within like um, three years, three years. And guess what? After we finish, we complete it. We, we, we are debt free at that time. God spoke again to me. You have to build another facility. You have to build Gilgal Center to what? We were struggling in building Gilgal Center one. God said, you pray, you, you pray for the harvest, you pray for the people. Now you have to obey. Only one word, I say this to Lord. Yes, Lord, I'm ready. Now I understand worship is not only singing, but worship is obedience. When God said something, when God spoke something, when we read the Bible and it speaks to us, we just say, yes, Lord. Ha, can I hear any amen? So, this is number one, obedience based on trust. Number two, obedience based on love. Abraham obeyed God. He offered his son as sacrifice because he trusts God. Number two, because Abraham loves God. How many of you love God? Yes, we love God, Pastor. John 14, 23. Jesus replied, if anyone loves me, he will obey my teaching. My father will love him and we will come to him and make our home with him. I read one more time. Jesus replied, if anyone loves me, he will obey my teaching. Okay, let me give my example. So I travel like six months in a year, not in Jakarta before COVID, but this year, I, I cancel all the trips. So like, let's say last year, six months, I'm not in Jakarta. So I'm a frequent traveler. So after changing the airlines, I, I decided to choose one airline for abroad international and then one airline for domestic because uh, I get a lot of benefits. And then for hotel also, Usually, uh, uh, I love to try new hotels. So I keep on changing hotel. There is a promo rate. Oh, new hotel, I want to try. But after uh, flying regularly, sometimes I arrive in the morning, 5 a.m. at the destination. I, I cannot check in at the hotel. So I decided to be faithful as a loyal client, loyal customer to one chain hotel. Because when I have like a high high class or high membership, then they give like a lot of privileges. Like I can check it early. I can have like, uh, instead of staying in the room, I have like uh, a club where I can have breakfast, lunch, dinner. I can have guests, I can pray. I can like uh, read the Bible there. And then I can have a late checkout and all of the good things that get, they give me as a elite membership. So, one summer, my family and my friend's family, we went on vacation. So we checked in at a nice hotel, new hotel, belong to that chain hotel. And then we have a special line to check in. And I'm very sure they will give me like upgraded room and give all the facilities. But unfortunately, they said no. Uh, and I asked why, why, why don't you give me? Because they said based on availability. I said for this kind of elite status, it is not based on availability. You have to give us this facility. They said, we cannot, okay? I don't argue, so we check in. And we found out the swimming pool is very nice. Uh, so we can swim with the view of a mountain, lake, it's very good. So the checkout time is 12. So because the view is very good, we decided to, uh, check out at once so we can like have lunch, a swimming, have lunch, take shower and then go to another city. And then I, 
um, coming back to the receptionist, I asked, can I have a late check out for uh, the day after tomorrow? He said, we cannot decide now because I'm entitled, I'm entitled that we are supposed, they are supposed to give a check out at like 5 p.m. They said, we cannot give you, just come back tomorrow. So tomorrow I come back, I said, well, can I give only one hour, one hour late check out. Suppose they are supposed to give us until 5 p.m., five hours late check out. They said, well, uh, you just come back tomorrow. I said, yesterday you said, come back tomorrow. Now I come back. You said, come back again tomorrow. I said, how come if I come back tomorrow, I have to prepare and all of this, blah, 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 blah. And then the holy anger comes out from my mouth. So I speak uh, a lot of things to them, but I don't speak a uh, harsh word, root word, but I said, you, you, you are not supposed to do like that. I'm this elite uh, with my elite status of membership. I'm entitled to have this, 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 this. And I left him and I went to the breakfast room. While I had my breakfast, it was a nice breakfast. And then in the midst of having the omelet, nice yogurt, Holy Spirit spoke to me. You are a servant of God. I said, yes, I am. And you always taught the congregation to be like Jesus. Yes, I did. And you have a wish also to be like Jesus. Yes, I still have that. I want to be like Jesus. But the thing that you just did, you are not like Jesus. Well, I said, they're not supposed to treat me like this. I'm, I'm a member with this uh, a kind of status, elite status, the highest member at this hotel. Well, uh, you better go back there. Holy Spirit is like speaking inside my heart. You better go back there and say, I'm sorry. What? <laughs> so the good omelet becoming lesser. And then I said to my wife, I have to go for a moment to go to the receptionist. He asked me why. I said, I'll tell you later. So I went back to the receptionist. I said, sir, I want to apologize for the things I just said to you. I'm not feeling okay. I'm not supposed, I was not supposed to behave like this. Please forgive me. You know, I look like idiot at a time. But inside my heart, there is peace. And Holy Spirit said to me, that is worship. Worship is obeying me because you love God. So, obedience based on love. Number three, obedience based on understanding. Matthew 13, 23, but he who receives seed on the good ground is he who hears the word and understands it who indeed bears fruit and produces some a hundredfold, some sixty, and some thirty. I believe Abraham wanted to offer Isaac as a sacrifice to God because he understands God is a good father. God is a good God. And a good God will not ask his son to do something crazy, to kill his own son. And based on this understanding, he did it. He did it. And as we know, God canceled the plan. God only tested the faith of Abraham. God only tested the trust of Abraham. God only tasted the love of Abraham toward God. And he was a success. He succeeded in the test. How about you? How about us? And the last one, number four. God is not looking for worship. God is looking for a true worshiper. Obedience based on wanting to be a blessing. Obedience based on wanting to be a blessing. This is our last verse, 2 Corinthians 9 verse 13. Because of the surface by which you have proved yourself, 
Men will praise God for the obedience that accompanies your confession of the gospel of Christ. Let me repeat this part. Men will praise God for the obedience and for your generosity in sharing with them and with everyone else. So, if you want to obey, you obey God because you want to be a blessing. Our obedience will become a blessing to others, will inspire others, will inspire our husbands, our community, our kids, our grandchildren, our employees. Let me give you one example. So, I met my wife at the year 2000. So, back from UK, my parents introduced my wife with a big family to me and asked me to like uh, help, help this family to know God better. So, I became friends with uh, Lucy. Lucy is now my wife. And then, after one year, we became close. And then I asked her to be my wife. And then he agreed, praise God. And then when I said, I love you the first time, I said to my wife, to my, uh, at the time, my girlfriend, I said, Luz, so I don't want to, uh, I don't want to get married in a long time. So I think one or two years is enough. And she said, okay. At the time I was uh, 28 years old, 28 years old. And I said, during our dating, I cannot kiss you. We cannot have sex. And he, she just stared at me and she said, who wants to be kissed? I said, I said, because we want to, to live a holy life. So after the holy matrimony, after the pastor blessed our marriage, and he said, amen, that will be the first time I will kiss you. And she said, agree. And after I said that, I regretted. It is not easy for a year not to kiss the girlfriend. But God helps us so we, can, uh, we could commit to that agreement. And then that, that was our first kiss at the holy matrimony. So we entered the marriage with the holiness. And what we experience is we experience God's blessing in our marriage. But not only that, our marriage become a blessing for many. Our marriage, our journey of holiness become inspiration for many. And a lot of church want to be blessed by our testimony. So, if we obey God, actually we can be a blessing. Even without telling anything about Jesus. By seeing our life, they will be blessed. And I will close with this. How to be an obedient person? Very easy. There are two things. Number one, learn. Learn to obey. I have to learn how to do push-up. I have to learn how to, how to avoid noodles, how to, how to cut uh, sugar, how to, to cut sweets, how to do plank, how to do sit-up. And all the things I have to learn. The same thing with obedience. We have to learn. Hebrew 5 verse 8 said, although he was a son, Jesus, although Jesus was a son, he learned obedience from what he suffered. It's okay to fail. Obey again. It's okay to fail. Obey again. And the last one, number two, die. Philippians 2 verse 8, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death. Even death on a cross. We have to die to our flesh in order to obey God's word. Let me give you a summary before I close. So worship is not only about singing, but worship is obedience. God is not looking for our worship, but God is looking for worshipers. What is true obedience? Number one, obedience based on trust. Number two, obedience based on love. Number three, obedience based on understanding. Number four, obedience based on wanting to be a blessing. And I close with this. How to be an obedient person? Number one, learn. 
Number two, die to our flesh, to our self. I pray that all of us will be the true worshipers that God is looking for. Let us pray. Thank you, Father, for the time of fellowship with all the forerunner members. And I pray that the seeds of truth will be planted in their heart. And with the help of Holy Spirit, all of us will always learn to obey and will always die to ourselves in order to obey the words of God. Help us, Lord. We want to be the true worshipers. And I ask this in Jesus' name. And all of God's people say, Amen. God bless you.